Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you're in the prog corner. And today, my friends, it's a really, really big one. It's the debut solo album from Lars Frederick Frosley, the keyboard player from Wobbler. Man, this guy is one of the absolute foundational uh, characters in Norwegian Prague. Not only is he the keyboard player from Wobbler, but he's also in Opium Cartel. He's done Time in Tuesmork and uh, White Willow, uh, along with his good buddy Jacob Holm Lupo, uh, whom the two of them actually formed a record company called Termo. Uh, that is where I really started feeling my love for Norwegian Prague. Um, Lars plays everything on this album except for bass, so he's singing, he's playing drums, and then that entire array of vintage keyboards, which includes Hammonds and Mellotrons, not just Mellotron, you know you're prog when you're playing both a Mellotron and a Chamberlain on the same album, Mini Moogs, and the Honer Clavinet, the Art Pro Soloist, the Rhodes Mark to the Wurlitzer, that Yamaha CP70, that Tony Bang's piano sound. It's all there, man. And then you've got a guy named Nikolai Hangsla is the bass player. He does a phenomenal job, man. He switches between a Rickenbacker and a Fender Jazz Precision bass. Just phenomenal. Real good stuff. Um, this album consists of four songs. Two long ones, booking it. You know, book ending it, and then you got two shorter tracks in the middle. It starts with a song called Writer of Damendag, which is about uh, Ragnarok, and apparently King uh, Rockne awakens, and uh, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, misfortune and craziness going on. Lars sings in Norwegian throughout this album, so I have no idea what the lyrics are all about, but I love it. Um, I'm getting a whole bunch of Musea Rosenbach on this track, uh, Writer of Damadog, but it's just got what I call that million dollar riff, man. It's a money riff. It's a riff for the ages. It elevates this song to really incredibly high levels. Um, you got a mini Moog and you got the piano. Uh, this Kind of makes me think of Tuzmark a little bit, that Dark Forest Prague. And the singing in Norwegian certainly makes me think a little bit more of Tuzmark. Because Wobbler, you know, all their stuff is in English. Um, there's a lot of twists and turns in this song. It goes in a lot of different directions. But it always leans on that main hook, which is just, a oh, man, it's a money shot right there. If this were a Wobbler track, it'd probably be my favorite Wobbler song. It's really that good. Uh, the song's like 16 minutes and 57 seconds. So it's an epic territory, and it's an amazing way to start off the album. Just so good. Um, the next track was the first single, At Stead under Himla Helvel. I guess that's, uh, what, a place under heaven or something like that. Anyway, I guess this is a, a song that's supposed to represent a renaissance garden. Starts out with a harpsichord. Um, it does give me all kinds of Italian prog feels here, PFM in particular, but also, again, Musea Rosenbach I'm hearing. Um, the harpsichord comes in with that flute, which is not really a flute. It's Lars playing the Mellotron. The full band kicks in, and it's just amazing. Then at that 2.30 mark, you get this really energetic uh, Rickenbacker bass going, and then the song just takes off, and it's really, really good. Um, it's actually really, really smart. The use of the harpsichord, uh, it's not on the first track, but it's on the next three. And uh, yeah, there is no guitar on this album. So the use of the harpsichord throughout the album is real, real smart because you get that plucked sound. So it almost sounds, you know, if you're not paying close attention, it almost sounds like a acoustic guitar. So very, very smart play there. Next up is a song called Jordan. Jer Jer Jerding. Man, I need to work on my Norwegian. Song clocks in at six and a half minutes, and it's great. It's bouncy. It's got this real jaunty feel to it. Um, it's very up-tempo. You got the Moog and the Clavinet going, so it's kind of giving me gentle giant feels here. I guess this song is supposed to be about, let's see, what did Lars say? A horse, a forest, an eclipse in the northern lights. So you make of that what you will. And again, like I said, the uh, the uh, 
Mellotron all the way through here, but again with the harpsichord on this track, really, really smart. Without a guitar, you need to have that little extra texture that you can't get with a whole lot of other uh, keyboard instruments. The album ends with another epic, the 16 and a half minute long uh, Natron's Cathedral, um, which is about uh, the Norwegian mountains in winter. And yeah, it is ice cold. And this song, probably my least favorite on the album. The first three tracks I absolutely love with all my heart. And then I get to this and I want it to be as good as the first epic. And I just don't feel like it. It just doesn't have enough there. Uh, it seems to be really built on two pinnacles. Uh, this track is built on the tritone, and this track is built on 15-8 time. You get tons of both in here. I just wish there was a little bit more sandwiched in between. Uh, the vocal parts are very dirge-like. Um, and then you get something that is really cool in the middle of this song. We go into this uh, real normal sounding progression, uh, which is a 3-4-1. For those of you keeping score at home, you're in... A minor, so yeah, it goes from C to D to A minor, and it just sounds real normal, and it's cool. Uh, they do it a couple times. The second time, it's real jazzy. I like it a lot. Uh, then it comes back with a 15-8 section and the Mellotron strings. It, it just There's just not quite enough here for me, um, so it kind of does hurt you know, the score a little bit. Um, so what am I going to give this one? Well, you know... Lars's voice is serviceable. At times, it almost sounds like uh, he's singing like, uh, what's his name, Moonrock uh, Benedict, Benedict Moonrock from uh, uh, Toosmork. It's kind of difficult to, you know, to really gauge how much I like it or don't like it. But the drumming here, Lars's drumming is the surprise. This guy's actually a really good drummer. Um, I had no idea. Uh, yeah, I was wondering why didn't you use the Wobbler guys on this album? And I'm I'm kind of getting it. I'm kind of understanding. This is him, you know, doing his own thing. He has stated that if it weren't for the pandemic, most of these songs would have ended up being Wobbler songs. Uh, but you know, Wobbler uh, doesn't put out a whole lot of albums. They've only got five, and uh, you could call this the Lost Wobbler album if you want. Um, but what is my score gonna be? Hmm, let me think. You know, yesterday I gave my first perfect score of 2023 to Seven Impale, and I really wanted to do likewise here, but that fourth track just didn't really do it for me. I'm giving it four and a half because it's almost perfect. I wish we had, uh, you know, a little bit of guitar in here, and I wish we had, uh, you know, perhaps a different drummer, maybe a different singer. I don't know. It is what it is, man. Lars is so talented. He can do whatever he wants, and this is exactly the record he wanted to drop, and I'm right there with him all the way through, uh, almost all the way through. It's a near-perfect album. I absolutely adore this thing. Trust me when I tell you this is going to be a factor at the end of the year when I'm doing my album of the year rankings and stuff like that. I absolutely adore it. Uh, fire foretelling. It drops this Friday, June 2nd on Charisma. Yeah, that's Charisma with a K, not the old school Charisma, you know, back in the day with Van de Graaff and Genesis and Linda's Farm. That label is defunct. This is Charisma with a K from Norway becoming like the go-to place for Norwegian Prague, and I love it. Anyway, next week, be on the lookout. Uh, I am planning on doing uh, ranking the Spock's Beard albums with the great Scott Medina from Sonic Perspective. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm still planning on doing more World Prog. So uh, more countries are coming up. And uh, I am going to be ranking the Prog albums of 2011 next week as well. It's a full slate. It always is. You never know what's going to happen here on the Prog Corner. Anyway, I'm Scott. I love you guys. Peace in the Middle East. And God save the king. I'm out.